Hey, what's going on team? It's Ricky with Tackle Solutions. I hope that you guys are all having an amazing day. Thank you guys again for tuning in to our Sunday Stock Talk. For those that are tuning in for the first time, our Sunday Stock Talks pretty much um, is a live stream where I dedicate time to break down the top stocks. Uh, for those that tune in, see value. And all I ask you is to post whatever stock you see value in in the ticker call out format. Uh, some of you guys might be saying that I uh, might be going uh, live a little bit too early. Uh, today is daylight safe. Uh, so in Arizona, uh, it's 6.33 p.m. right now. So uh, overall, I'm super excited that in Arizona, I at least get to catch up uh, and get an extra hour of sleep. For those in California, then uh, yeah, I'm sorry. But all together, I really do appreciate you guys' time. I really hope that you guys enjoy this live, uh, this live stream. And if you guys have any questions or any recommendations, again, just make sure that you post it in the chat that you see, uh, and I'll do my best in answering that. So I really hope that I earn your thumbs up in this video. Uh, but before we go ahead and get started, uh, I wanted to see where you guys are all from. So uh, I know that we have a couple of people that are tuning in for the first time. Uh, we've been having um, a couple new members join TechBook Solutions. We just hit a little bit over 230,000 members on Facebook. It's it's so crazy to think about like that number because you know that many people have requested to join our Facebook group. Uh, we got Malaysia, New York, New Jersey, San Diego, Chai Town, New York City. I like it. San Diego, Minnesota, Taiwan, Kansas City. Oh my goodness, New York area 51. I like that. Same here. Uh, Ohio, NYC, California. Same here. Arizona. Flagstaff, Mars. I like it. I like it. Washington. All right. So it, it's super cool to see. I think that we can all agree that it's super cool to see that we all come from different backgrounds and different areas all over the world, not even just within the United States. I saw Korea. I saw Puerto Rico. Um, and the really cool thing about that is um, one of the things that, oh, I actually wanted to do this within the live stream. Uh, so it's November now, right? Uh, tomorrow is going to be November 4th. And I at least wanted to do my part, so no more October. We got to set new goals. And this is something that I'm going to dedicate a little bit of time um, to do uh, tonight and tomorrow as well. It's nothing that we have to do right away. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to bring up, and we all have different goals, right? We're all starting at different positions. So uh, one of the things that I wanted to remind you is to keep things simple. I think, and again, I 100% like want not only want to be someone that motivates you when it comes down to trading. Uh, and if you know I sparked your interest in getting started with trading, then I'm super happy to at least be that spark. But at the end of the day, you guys know that trading is not the only thing that I do. It's one of my biggest passions, but one of the things that I've been getting into uh, is investing in real estate. So one of my biggest goals uh, for November uh, is to really get the ball rolling with this investment property, this overall flip uh, that I'm gonna start and do a full walkthrough tomorrow. So I actually have Nick driving right now from California to Arizona and hopefully first thing tomorrow. Uh, I'm not too sure how much trading I'm going to do. I'm going to be going live with the Learn Plan Profit team. Uh, but shortly after that live stream, our plan is to get in his car, drive up to Peoria uh, and to start doing that full on walkthrough on that new property. I just wanted to share my my one of my biggest goals uh, for November. I think it's it's great to have overall big goals, uh, but it's kind of difficult to have huge goals and work towards them when you don't have sub goals. Uh, when it comes down to one of my goals, when it comes down to trading uh, for the no month of November, a majority of um, the last two weeks of October were not that bad for me. Last week was pretty consistent. Uh, I did not have uh, I did have one red day, uh, and that was on Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, and it was only thirty eight dollars. Uh, but one of the things that I really have been trying to work on is just focusing on being more consistent. I think that a lot of you guys can agree on that. Uh, my last two weeks of trading in comparison to my last month of trading, uh, my last two weeks were a huge improvement. Was it the most money? No, but my biggest focus for the month of November is again, just to focus on that consistency and to feel comfortable. So I hope that we can empower you to ignore all the noise that you are seeing and hearing other people either doing well in and forcing yourself to, you know, maybe stress about how much money does it you're making and stuff like that. Again, we all excel at different rates. I just want to remind you that again, you're not watching this live stream because you know, I'm fun or because I'm entertaining 
or anything like that. You're watching this live stream. You're, you're dedicating time out of your Sunday, which is not something that the average person does uh, because you want more out of life. I'm not saying that you have to approach it in a super aggressive way. I just want to remind you that you're doing your part and putting in the time and putting in the work. So set up a plan, create small sub goals, you know, whatever that might be, right? Uh, maybe to start trading with $1,000 or maybe to open up your paper trading account uh, before the month of November ends. Maybe you want to focus on not losing any money, right? If you're simulation trading and all you want to do is you know, you lost a little, you've been losing money the past couple of months and all you wanna focus on is breaking even. So risk management is gonna be your top priority. Again, everyone excels at different rates. Everyone has a different road to success, but it doesn't mean that we can't get there. It just means that we have to approach it in our own way and understand what it is that we are doing. So um, yeah, just wanted to uh, remind you guys that you guys are doing something that is amazing. Uh, I really hope that you guys enjoy this Sunday stock talk. And again, I hope that I earn your thumbs up if I do break down whatever stock it is that you guys see Val in. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys' time and let's go ahead and get started. I know everyone is gonna be talking about forward slash NG. Uh, so let me go ahead and just pull it up. I'm just gonna break it down right now. So it's gonna be forward slash NG Z19. Um, this is where it closed at on Friday, and this is where we are at right now. For all those that are going to be asking, yes, I'm using the TD Ameritrade Think or Swim platform. We're having huge issues with TD Ameritrade, at least I was, on Thursday. So uh, this is the platform that I use. It's not the one that's recommended for you. It's, you know, you use whatever you want to use. Uh, there's so many amazing brokerages out there. There's Charles Schwab, Robinhood, Interactive Brokers, Webull, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, These are just platforms that we use. Think about what you want out of a platform. Find the one that best meets your criteria. Don't just always ask, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Think about what your goal is and what you're trying to do. So this thing is already up 3.34%. So if it goes according to plan and if natural gas holds up here, we could see a 10% push on D, uh, on that, uh, what is it? On you gas, which is the correlating ETN. Uh, unfortunately, for those that are in D gas, will most likely experience a 10% drop. Again, if natural gas holds where it's at right now, if it pulls back down to 2.70 by the time the market opens, uh, then you won't benefit from anything. But all I want to remind you, uh, we're having a lot of people super excited in the Learn Plan Profit chat because they've been holding you guys because natural gas has been bullish as it normally is during this time of year. All I want to remind you is that just as much as natural gas went up, it could have gone down. Um, I want you to celebrate your successes as long as you remember your failures, right? Uh, the times that you did not do well. There's, I'm sure, a couple of people that also held DGAS. Therefore, I don't want you to be rubbing your profits in the faces of those that might not be having a great start to the week. Uh, you know you've been there, you know you've held the opposite side of maybe one that's gone up or down, and all I want to remind you is, you know, be that person, right? That empowers other people to be the best person that they can be. But that's all I want to remind you. There's no, no amazing part of, of gloating or anything like that. I want, if you guys want to talk about it and would, you know, um, just like to conversate and, and be so excited, send me a direct message, send me a direct message. I would love to talk to you about it. I just don't want people to be rubbed off the wrong way, uh, based off of you know, it's huge. It's ten. It's a ten percent push. There is no question that is a huge push. But just think about it. It could have gone down just as much as it could have gone up. And because of that, you know, I think that we can all respect that and respect other people that might not be opening in the same position. So um, enough with the talking. I do apologize. I just wanted to start it off on a strong note. So uh, the rest of the time, uh, I'm going to be focusing on you guys. And um, let's go ahead and do it. So uh, if you want me to break down whatever stock you see value in, uh, please just post it in the ticker call out format and I would love to break it down for you. So we got CPRX right now. Let's go ahead um, and get started. So CPRX, I'm gonna go on the 180 day four hour chart. So I definitely see why it is. So first of all, it's a pharmaceutical company. Um, that's a huge red flag for me. I just don't trade them. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't. I just personally don't because of the volatility and a lot of 
false manipulation that creates big drops or big pushes. Unfortunately, I experienced the big drop. Therefore, bioscience, pharmaceutical, and cannabis, I just choose to stay away. And that is my own opinion because of my own experience. So I do see why you're bringing this up. It's had a previous support at 450. It looks like it's trying to consolidate. It's formulating somewhat of a support. I would set your alert to see if it actually breaks above $5. Again, it's most efficient and most effective when you partake on on a trade when the action is happening, when it's moving, when it's uptrending, right? You want to grow your account, so put your money where it's actually growing, not where you hope it begins to grow. Super simple. So let's wait for confirmation. Let's wait for that overall direction to be in our favor. And if we do get that, then again, you're gonna feel comfortable and confident because you know that overall direction is in your favor and you did your part in getting it for a good deal because you were so, so patient. Let's go ahead and break down Rick Sharks MSFT. Here we go. All right, so there's no, all right, I want your guys' opinion. I talk a little bit too much and I wanna be a little bit more engaged uh, with you guys. So Microsoft, Microsoft went through its earnings, had a huge push up. So all I want to remind you is that not only do we want to partake and put our money where something is increasing in value, but we also want to do our part and getting in for a good deal. So looking at Microsoft, I don't want you guys to focus on indicators, nothing like that, right? I want you to focus and think about it as a deal hunter. It went through its earnings, right? Earnings. Had a huge push up, drove the price up and made overall highs on the 180 day chart, 14644. What has it been doing since it hit that high on that day? What has it been doing? Has it been making higher highs? Is it still indicating signs of an uptrend? Is it a good deal right now? It's consolidating, right? It's flatlining. So what does that tell you? What normally happens as something begins to consolidate, especially after a huge push? There's no question that earnings, because of its news, drives a lot of demand through a very short period of time. And then what happens as time goes on? It most likely begins to consolidate and then maybe pulls back. It could pop up just as much as it could pull back. Looking at previous patterns, as it goes through pushes, right? And then it corrects itself and then it drops, right? It goes through pushes as it becomes overbought and then it pulls back and then it drops. It goes through pushes, it becomes overbought, it consolidates, and then it makes sense on why it can pull back. So if you think it's gonna continue to push up, then the way that I would approach this is I would wait for higher highs. You know, if you're really thinking that this is gonna make higher highs, then do your part in just waiting for confirmation and setting your alert for that. So I would set my alert at the break above 145, and then I would set my alert also for the break below like 14250. So I get alerted if this thing actually begins to push up or push down. I think that's a that's a safe like alert based system that we can set up. We want to know the direction. Is Microsoft going to continue to push up? And if it does, and we make higher highs, then again that direction and overall pattern is in our, in your favor. If it begins to pull back, then you just saved yourself in not getting into a trade as it's overbought because of earnings and then now it's gonna sell off and you bought at the very top, right? All it requires is time. And by setting your alert, you can follow up with it when they actually get triggered. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and break down the next one. So I hope that you guys uh, agree with that breakdown. So the next one is SLCA. So SLCA, here we go, SLCA. Um, one of the things that I wanna bring up, and again, I wanna make sure that you guys all understand that by me breaking something down and either saying that you know I agree with it or don't agree with it, it's 100% based off of my opinion and you should never trade off of that. One of the things that I wanna bring up with SLCA is if I were to ask you, is this something that is consistently increasing in price or in value, or is this something that is showing signs of a continuous descending pattern what would you say it's making lower lows there there is no question right um it continues to make lower lows and yeah it does have periods where it finds the support and then it begins to rally no question about it and it looks like after earnings it had a huge drop it had a 10 percent day nearly on friday right so maybe that's why it popped up on one of your scanners and then now with the macd with the rsi and just looking at it, it looks like a great deal, right? Because it's sold off so much and you're like, hey, you know, it, it's just bound to push up. 
but not really, right? As something sells off aggressively, it doesn't mean that it can't continue to sell off. And that's one of the things that I want to remind you, especially with such a consistent pattern and direction of a continuous descending pattern, don't think that it can't continue to sell off. I agree that, hey, you know, it does have potential for this thing to push up. Uh, I do see your message here. I do apologize. I don't know why um, it's blocking it, but I'll make sure that I break down AMD for you. Um, but yeah, I do see that, you know, potential for this thing to pop, uh, but I would definitely set my alerts. You know, we, we all know what we should be waiting for, and I would set my alerts for the break above, you know, wherever you get confirmation. For me, this would be around like uh, $540 to maybe $6.00. If we get a continuous pattern of higher highs and higher lows, then that direction is in your favor. You can day trade it, and as long as it sticks to that pattern, you can manage your risk accordingly. There's there's a pattern there, but when something continues to sell off, like why try to trade something that just continues to bleed? It's just so difficult, right? The overall direction is not in your favor. So because of that, uh, I would say that there's greater risk than I would say reward with SLCA, uh, SLCA in my opinion as of right now. So we got DNR and AMD. Let's go ahead and break those down for the team. So DNR, here we go. Uh, DNR doing a lot of consolidating. So one, um, I'm very familiar with this one. As you guys can see, right around one dollar, all it's doing is consolidating with an up and coming earnings report on 11.7. Again, I don't like trading during the earnings. I don't like holding during earnings as it could act as a positive or negative catalyst. I can see why 100% that it's it's found a very solid support here. First of all, it's a penny stock, it's a dollar. I would not trade it just because of that. Um, it could be very volatile. And with, and with that being said, there's just not enough direction. It just continues to consolidate within one to 110. And yeah, I can see that margin of profit to potentially be worth it, but it's just not worth it, especially with the up and coming earnings and maybe the not so consistent and attractive descending pattern as it can sell off just as much as it can push up. But because it's a penny stock, because it's a continuous descending pattern, and because it has an up and coming earnings, the risk is just too great for me. Um, and it's just not something that I would feel comfortable doing. So DNR, the next one's gonna be AMD. Let's go ahead and move on to that next one. So AMD, can I get your guys' opinion on this one? What do you guys think about AMD? So AMD went through earnings, had a really strong push up after it recovered from that initial drop, right? We're approaching previous highs, 35.55. Testing resistance, I like that. Yep, it is overbought, but it is testing resistance, right? Can AMD continue to make higher highs? Of course. One of the things that I wanna remind you is that you wanna put yourself in a position where you're set up for success. Can AMD continue to pop and can it push up three, four, five percent and make new highs? Of course, the overall direction is in its favor. One of the things that I wanna bring up is, you know, if you want to play AMD and it continues to make higher highs and you know you have that pattern and direction, the overall um, just pattern to work with, then yeah, 100% does make sense. One of the things that I want to remind you is that this is not an amazing deal. You, you're pretty much trading, trading the direction and, and the pattern right now as it's making higher highs. And even then with the RSI and the MACD, it looks a little bit more overbought. It's more due for a pullback potentially before it even continues to uptrend. And even if it does end up making higher highs, I'm intrigued to see if AMD does make higher highs. But one of the things that I wanna bring up is that looking at previous price points and where it, where it's been, right? And how much money, how much percentage growth and potential it has in comparison how much it can give back, it's not an amazing deal. Can it continue to uptrend? Of course. And is it worth to day trade? That's up to you. But for all those that are going into swing trades, holding AMD, especially as it's so overbought, I would like to have a better understanding of, you know, the low points and the high points and when it's overall just more on the overbought setting. I would say that AMD with how it's playing out right now, it's just more on the overbought side than it is on the oversold side. So because of that, I would have to say that it would be more in the you know, sell territory than buy. But again, that is just 100% my opinion. I know that it is making higher highs. It's been showing signs of continuous uptrend pattern and I find that attractive but I would definitely switch from swing trading it to now more day trade. So if it does continue to uptrend, of course you can play it day by day, but because it's so overbought, the risk of holding it overnight just might come at, at a greater risk. And let me know what you guys think about that. Do you think that it's maybe a better idea to begin to day trade AMD now that it's so overbought instead of swing trading it because it's no longer an overall good deal? Let me know what you guys think. 
uh, here we go. So let's go ahead and do the uh, breakdown for Andrew. So we're going to do uh, PLUG, right? So here we go. So what, what do you guys think about uh, PLUG? So Plug Power Incorporated. Um, I can definitely see a pattern here, right? So one of the things that I see here is that we're making higher highs and higher lows, right? Um, overall highs pulled back, bounced off of this SMA line, pushed up, made higher highs, just how we saw based off previous patterns. It pulled back, bouncing off of the SMA line. Uh, one of the things that I wanna bring up is that it has an up and coming earnings on the 7th of November. This can act as either a positive or negative catalyst and you can look at previous earnings and what it did. Um, I just think that that comes at too great of a risk. Um, I really do like the pattern and the margin of profit that it does have to offer. This is definitely a lower cap stock, so it comes at a greater risk, but I can see the pattern. I can see the pattern of you know the support at the SMA line based off of previous patterns You know for the possibility of this thing to push up that 10%. It makes sense, but I think that the earnings is definitely gonna have a toll and an effect on the way that it performs leading up to its overall reversal. So it's just something that I wanna bring up to your attention. Again, nothing is a perfect trade, uh, but again, it's being aware of um, you know potential problems that you might encounter uh, and, and just having some form of like plan B plan. Yeah, so it looks like a good dip by, yeah, a lot of you guys are correct on that, uh, but let me know what you guys think about yeah, I do agree that it does show signs of this potential reversal, uh, but it is also so close to its earnings that I just don't think it's worth holding, especially as it could just drive the price down. And we've, we've said it multiple times before, technicals are great. I, I love trading technicals as a technical trader. I understand that. But there is no question that when fundamentals kick in or when there's some form of news or catalyst such as earnings that gets brought into the you know table, fundamentals will take over and they'll take over for a short period of time, but that can definitely kick a lot of people out. Uh, so let me know what you guys think about that. So uh, what's going on, Alex? What's up? What's up? So we got ticker symbol shop. I'd be more than happy to break this one down for you. Let's go ahead and do two more breakdowns and then we'll leave it at that. I don't want to take too much of your guys' time. I really do appreciate you guys even tuning in uh, this long and I hope and I hope really hope that I'm earning your thumbs up. <clears throat> Uh, here we go. So Shopify making higher highs and higher lows based off of previous patterns. One of the things that we've brought up, and I've said that literally, I've said this literally every single time. Um, one of the things that I've said is, what have I said about Shopify and this pattern? This overall SMA line, right, used to act as a support, and it's now acting as a resistance, right? Um, one of the things that I want to remind you is that we are not seeing a break of pattern right now. We're seeing a lot of consolidation on Shopify, but we're not seeing higher highs. So because of that, I would say that let's simply set our alerts, right? And just think about, think about the time that it's been, it's spent below the SMA line consolidating. All wasted time, right? Especially if you're, you know, you got in um, at the potential reversal. Um, or if you got in when you thought that it was gonna make higher highs, but it actually got rejected. Set yourself up for success. Keep it super simple and actually wait for higher highs. Set your alerts and once we, and if we do get that confirmation, then great. But guess what, if it continues to bleed, then at least you didn't put yourself in that poor position, right? Uh, for, I do have, I did see one of the messages of someone asking me to break down DWT. Again, you're not posting it in the ticker call out format and that's literally all I asked you to do to make sure that you've done you know, your own due diligence. So uh, we got Paula with ENPH. Let's go ahead and break that down. Here we go. ENPH. So made higher highs, a very similar pattern to Shopify. Now making lower lows. Overall getting rejected by the SMA line. I do see why you're bringing this one up, especially after earnings and a huge drop. We're not seeing any confirmations or any higher highs right now. I wouldn't touch this at all. It's not the direction is not in your favor. This dip by opportunity just still does not make sense because it continues to sell off. If it finds a support or if it begins to push up and there's a consistent pattern in which you can actually see and trade off of, then great, so be it. But until then, this thing is a falling knife and I would not you know, stop to grab it. So because of that, I would, I would definitely have to stay away. Uh, what about natural gas? If you tuned in to the beginning of the live stream, you would have seen me break down both you gas and natural gas. So here we go. Ticker symbol SQ. I'll do a couple more breakdowns. I'm just going to do them a little bit quicker just so I can get through a couple of you guys. Um, overall, 
Square has been all over the place, right? We've been seeing a lot of consolidation uh, overall up and coming earnings as it's earnings season. Um, I would be very careful with this one. I just wouldn't feel comfortable holding. I'm gonna set my alert for the break above 65. If we actually begin to make higher highs, then great. I will follow up with SQs and then do a technical analysis again then. Until then, I don't care about SQs because you know it's not doing much. It's just continues to consolidate and I don't care for consolidation. I want the direction to be in my favor and I'm just not getting that off of square uh, or out of square right now. So uh, appreciate that, Luis. Here we go. Uh, we got ticker symbol Tesla. Love to break this one down. So um, I don't know if you guys heard, but uh, I believe there's a big crash um, in, uh, on the Tesla that came out in the news. So hopefully that doesn't affect Tesla too much. But one of the things that I want to bring up is again, Tesla went through its earnings, exceeded expectations, huge push up, very similar to Microsoft, right? This one did it a little bit more dramatically. Um, it's super overbought. What do you guys think? Do you think that Tesla is going to continue to push up? Do you think that it's always going to hold up above? $300 right now we're trading at 313 or do you think that it makes sense that Tesla can pull back? I want to leave that up to you guys. I personally think that because it's so overbought, as you're seeing, the volume bars are beginning to correct itself back to where it was before. I think that over a matter of time, Tesla will begin to correct itself and come back to the SMA line. I just think that the hype was real. Tesla is huge for that. Um, and um, I'm just a big believer in locking in profits. And if you're able to benefit from that huge push up, um, great. If it begins, an indi uh, I would just have some form of stop loss set up. If that's at 300, if you know, whatever that might be, if you begin to see Tesla begin to tank, just know that it's not going to come at a surprise. That's all I want to share with you guys. I, I know you guys are going to be able to. Uh, so this is a perfect way on how to get blocked. If you're annoying and you don't post it in the ticker call out format, um, I don't care to break it down for you. So again, if you're not able to help yourself in like setting up your own plan, I'm, I'm not you know doing anything for you, right? Setting up your own plan, I just don't ex understand how you expect someone else to take time out of their day uh, to break it down for you. So if someone else wants me to break down DWT, I'll definitely do it, but not for that person. So it's, it's like such a joke. It's, come on, we're, we're on YouTube. All I'm asking you is literally just to post it in the ticker call out format. Uh, we got uh, TMOS, which is T-Mobile. Um, overall, been showing signs of higher highs. We're approaching previous highs at $85. Um, I'd be very careful. We are at the SMA, uh, EMA line, and it has been making higher highs. I'm all about that, right? So it's a continuous pattern there. I wouldn't say the margin of profit is necessarily worth it, and I do see a potential pullback opportunity, which means that it's a little bit more on the overbought side than it is oversold. And uh, because of that, it wouldn't be such a surprise if it does begin to correct itself. So uh, just be well aware of both sides. So here we go. We got ticker symbol. Thank you again, Gabriel, for putting it in the ticker call out format. So that's CSTM. So CSTM, here we go. All right. So continuous uptrend pattern. I like that overall highs, lows, highs, lows, highs, lows. It's definitely showing signs of an overall reversible MACD. Looks good, the RSI and not too much. Can it make higher highs? Of course, based off previous highs, it's right around $15. That's about a six to 7% margin of profit. I would be very careful with this. It looks like it has very low volume. Um, oh, not too bad. Um, my biggest thing on this is as the RSI looks a little bit more on the overextended side, I'd be very careful that you know if it doesn't actually make higher highs and based off of previous highs that we've seen here, if it actually gets rejected and pulls back just like we saw it happen here. So again, I would just be very careful with you know your day trade or your short term swing trade that if it does begin to pull back to not be afraid to you know cover your profits. All right. Here we go. So we got, uh, so I did that one for you, G-O-E-X, G-O-E-X. Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you again for posting the ticker call out format. So right here, I see a lot of inconsistencies. We used to trade, um, you know, above the SMA line, below the SMA line, above the SMA line, below the SMA line. So it's kind of all over the place. I don't usually like trading uh, patterns like this, but one of the things that we're seeing is, again, as the market pulls back, we're seeing the overall, um, you know, uh, gold begin to push up as of right now. And we're approaching that SMA line, which should act as a resistance. The RSI and the MACD and the SMA line would all indicate that. If we actually begin to make higher highs and it shows a continuous pattern, then great. But be honest, it wouldn't be such a surprise as it's been showing signs of a descending pattern if it actually begins to correct itself and pull back from there. So again, just set your alerts on both sides. And if 
the direction ends up playing out in your favor, then great, so be it. But if not, then again, don't be afraid to not take a position. One of the best things that you can do is especially now more than ever before is I think that we can all agree that the market's been very inconsistent. So with that being said, you know, why you don't have to take a day trade or trade every single day. So be selective, be empowered to say no. By you say no, it means that you have some form of understanding of criteria and that that was not met. And that's what I'm here to remind you every single day. So you have to allow that opportunity to present itself. As you know, someone that's recently been getting into like real estate investing, I'm not gonna buy every house that is presented to me. I want to wait for those opportunities. The one that I found, you know, last week on Friday that I'm closing on Monday. Because why? Because the margin of profit of uh, margin of profit is worth it because it makes sense and it's within my own means and, and I understand it. Again, all, all these criteria have to be met before you make that investment purchase decision. Um, so. 100%. Um, and, and sometimes it does suck as you can experience FOMO if it did go according to plan. But again, it's better than being in the red, right? Uh, so for all those that have FOMO on those that benefited from natural gas and that push up on you guys, just think. Think about that you could have been on the opposite side and could have been you know, taking a loss on D gas. So um, I think that we can learn a lot by just watching, right? Especially if you're just getting started, be empowered to learn. That's why we're doing this, right? You're, you're in this market to learn more about what to do and what not to do because it's not a perfect working system. You have to figure it out on your own. So AMC, all right, I'm gonna do two more, two more. I'm sorry for keeping you guys here too long. So two more AMC. Um, okay, so it is kind of finding a support uh, based off previous patterns right around $9. We're just getting a lot of consolidation. I just don't like this one. It's not making higher highs and I would set my alert for the break above $10 if that. And as an up and coming earnings report and based off of previous earnings, uh, the performance hasn't always been the best. So because of that and how it's trading below the SMA line, this just doesn't meet my overall criteria, especially for this being AMC. Um, and if you're going into this as a swing trader, as an investment, um, I, I wouldn't see the day trade margin to be worth it. Um, and the swing trade opportunity just isn't super clear right now because the direction isn't super clear. So uh, we got fit. Yep, we heard about fit a lot last week. So 100% fit was showing signs of a continuous descending pattern. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it has its earnings on the 6th and had a huge push up. Uh, super overbought, super overextended. Um, you know, if you already missed out on, on the pushes, um, if it continues to push up, then great. If you wanna approach it as a day trade, that's up to you. Uh, but it's been pushing up when since, what was this, the 7th? 7th of, no, the, wow. Okay, so it's been about a week. Um, we've been hearing a lot about this. It, it got brought up to my attention last week, uh, but I had a 15% day on Friday. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, wasn't trading this. It looks like a lot of the push all happened during the pre-market session and it pretty much just plateaued the entire market session. So what that means is if you didn't hold overnight and hope for the best, then you really didn't benefit from much. And you know, why even put yourself in that position? So it's definitely much more on the overbought side. All right. Um, I know you guys still have a lot of breakdowns. Holy shoot. All right. We got X, which is steel, right? United States steel. Yep, definitely a little bit more on the overbought side. Went through earnings, super overbought, super overextended. It looks like it's trying to change its overall direction, especially after a lot of consolidation right around that SMA line. So it's just too overbought, it's too recent due to its earnings, and I would need it to kind of like cool off before um, before we make a decision of, hey, should we continue to hold this? It went through its earnings, so again, it's very relevant right now. So once that hype kind of dies out, just like we saw with Tesla, it'll slowly begin to correct itself and we can get a better understanding of you know, whether we wanna trade it or not. So um, again, we have so many breakdowns right now and it doesn't look like I'm gonna get through the list. I tried my best on getting through as many as I could during this short live stream. I think I got through about 20. So um, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I, I tried to, uh, break down as many as I could. Um, if you guys, if you guys are part of Tech Plus Solutions or if you guys are part of Learn Plan Profit, just tag me in the group alert or in the watch list, uh, and I'll I'll be sure to break it down for you. What's going on, G man? Smash that like button. I like it. I appreciate it. So um, again, uh, one of the biggest things that I wanted to remind you guys this uh, for this month is, uh, regardless of how you did last month, 
we're presented with a new month of November, what I want to remind you is how important it is to have a goal. Your goal doesn't have to be anything that impresses me. It doesn't have to even you know impress you. All it has to be is progress. And it's tough to hear sometimes, right? And I've been there. But if you're losing money, right? Or if you're paper trading and you're practicing, but you're just struggling to consistently grow your account, how about you dedicate this month on risk management? Or how about you dedicate this month on just seeing a very small percentage amount of growth within your you know, uh, trading account? The biggest focus should always be progress. And this is in all aspects of life, right? I didn't go into, you know, um, the, the, the biggest thing that I'm trying to compare it right now to is my, my newest venture um, is like, you know, flipping homes in real estate. And I didn't go into it hoping for the best and just going at it with my first flip. I began to lend money and I began to shadow the people that were flipping. So I then began to learn what they were doing, what I should do and what I shouldn't do. So therefore I was practicing and gaining some form of understanding. So again, if you're just getting started or you're in the very beginning stages, don't stress yourself out. You have nothing but time to make money. Right now, it should be you should be trading to learn and to have an understanding of what you're doing. One of the last, this is the last thing that I'm going to leave you guys with. And I'm sorry that I'm bugging you, but all I want to remind you is how important it is to have an understanding of what you are doing. If you are taking a position and questioning your trade of, hey, where should I sell? Hey, where should I cut losses? Or should I not buy right now? If you're asking those questions, you are not ready to take that position. If you are asking the question of how much should my position size be, you are not ready to take your position. I don't care how much money it is that you have. You have to be realistic with yourself, right? Like you have to have an understanding of what you are doing. For everyone that is watching right now, if I were to put up my McLaren or yeah, my McLaren for sale and I were to post it for sale for $10,000, regardless if you have $10,000 to your name or not, you will do everything in your power to buy that McLaren for $10,000 because you know it's worth more than that. And that's just due to common knowledge, but it should be some kind of way like that as well. When it comes down to your day trades or your swing trades or the way that you approach the market, there should be some form of understanding of the risk involved, of the opportunity cost and the position that you are putting yourself in. But I don't think everyone that is watching right now always takes that into consideration. They're always just thinking about how much money am I can make? How much money am I can make? How much money am I can make? With no form of risk management every single day. Moving forward, especially for the month of November, let's do something different. Let's make some progress, even in the smallest way. I think that we can all agree that small progress every single day consistently can lead to big results. We're not here to make it or break it. We're here to enjoy the process as we learn. I really do appreciate you guys' time. I really hope that I earned your thumbs up in this video. If you guys have any questions or comments of what you saw in today's Sunday Stock Talk, feel free to send me a short direct message on Discord. Um, and again, don't forget to join our free Facebook group. That's going to be that first link below. And if you're ready to join the Learn Plan Profit team, you get to watch me trade live every single day. You'll see me trade live tomorrow at Market Open. Again, don't forget, we went through daylight savings. So I will be trading live at 6 30 a.m. as that's wait. That should, that should be the time that the market opens. And I'll double check that right now and I'll post an announcement. But again, that's going to be that second link down below. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about the Learn Plan Profit Group and what it's like to watch me trade live every single day. And if you think that I could be a good mentor for you, then again, click that second link down below and learn a little bit more about what our Learn Plan Profit team uh, has to offer. I really appreciate uh, your guys' time and I wish you guys an amazing, blessed Sunday. And like always, Let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy.